This is a picture test in practical neuroanatomy. You may use the video as a revision for the topic or as a self-assessment tool. For the purpose of self-assessment, you may pause the video and spend your own time to read the question and come up with the answer, then replay the video to confirm your answer by listening to the comments and explanations. Now I will deal with the sectional anatomy of the brain. Identify the spaces 1 to 5. This is a horizontal section through the cerebral hemisphere at the level of the interventricular foramen of Monroe, number 2. The foramen opens into the lateral ventricle from one side. Here you can see the anterior horn is shown, that is number 1. Note that the anterior horn extends forwards from the interventricular foramen into the frontal lobe, hence it's also called the frontal horn. Also note the large head of the caudate nucleus projecting from the lateral wall of the anterior horn. The interventricular foramen is located between the column of the fornix and the anterior end of the thalamus. It communicates between the lateral and third ventricles. The third ventricle here is marked as 3. It is a slit-like space located in the midline. The third ventricle is bounded on either side by the thalami. The wide space 4 is the trigon of the lateral ventricle where the body of the lateral ventricle meets the posterior and inferior horns. You can see here that there is a substantial amount of choroid plexus of lateral ventricle resting on the trigon. This can be also seen in a computed tomography scans of the brain because it contains a small amount of calcified material. Just anterior to the trigon is the narrow tail of the caudate nucleus. From this position, it curves and extends forwards in the roof of the inferior horn. The posterior horn of the lateral ventricle is shown in 5. It extends into the occipital lobe, hence it's also called the occipital horn. It's of variable length and is surrounded by white matter. Note here that the forceps major, or forceps occipitalis, the fibers of the corpus callosum, they bulge into the posterior horn of the lateral ventricle to form what is called the bulb. Match the following statements with the lettered labels. This is a section of the midbrain. You can see the narrow cerebral aqueduct, which is the cavity of the midbrain. Also note the tectum with colliculi located posteriorly. Anteriorly, you can identify the longitudinally running fibers forming the crust cerebri or basis pedunculi in E. This is on either side of the interpeduncular fossa. The crust cerebri contains projection fibers, corticopontine, corticobulbar, and corticospinal. The fibers, as the name indicate, they arise in the cerebral cortex, cortico, and then they descend to the brainstem or spinal cord. Therefore, E matches with three fibers arise from the cerebral cortex. Note that the section is at the level of the decussation of the superior cerebellar peduncle, shown in D. The decussating fibers originate from cerebellar nuclei, like the dentate nucleus, and they project to the thalamus and the red nucleus. The superior cerebellar peduncle is the principal efferent bundle of the cerebellum, although it also contains some afferent fibers, like the ventral spinocerebellar tract. Thus, D, the superior cerebellar peduncle, matches with two fibers arising from the dentate nucleus. Since the superior cerebellar peduncle decussates in the lower midbrain, then in this region of the tectum, it is the level of the inferior colliculus, A. This is a sensory relay nucleus in the auditory pathway. Fibers of the nearby lateral lemniscus synapse here and the axons of neurons in the inferior colliculus they pass through the inferior brachium to reach the medial geniculate body of the thalamus so a the nucleus of the inferior colliculus matches with one sensory relay nucleus the cerebral aqueduct is surrounded by gray matter called periaqueductal gray matter in b this Periaqueductal gray matter forms a ring, and its neurons play a role in modulation of pain. 
its electrical stimulation has been shown to cause analgesia and its stimulation will activate encephaline releasing neurons that project to the raphe nuclei in the brainstem these in turn they project to the dorsal horn of spinal cord where it forms excitatory connections with the inhibitory interneurons located in lamina 2 rexid lamina 2 also known as the substantia gelatinosa remember that incoming pain fibers through the dorsal root of a spinal nerve they synapse in the substantia gelatinosa with dendrites of nucleus proprius which contain the neurons that form the spinothalamic tract b the periaqueductal gray matter thus matches with five contains encephaline positive cells that play an important role in the regulation of pain c is located within the periaqueductal gray matter ventral to the cerebral aqueduct and at the level of the inferior colliculus it is thus the location of the trochlear nucleus being a nucleus involved in the supply of extraocular muscles in fact it supplies only one of these muscles the superior oblique muscle it is also connected to the nearby medial longitudinal fasciculus this fasciculus consists of ascending and descending fibers that connect vestibular and cochlear nuclei with nuclei controlling extraocular muscles the trochlear nucleus here oculomotor nucleus at a higher level and the abducent nucleus at a lower level in the pons c the trochlear nucleus thus matches with four that is it receives input from the vestibular nuclei this input is received via the medial longitudinal fasciculus and it is for coordinating head and eye movements match the following statements with the lettered labels this is a section of the open part of the medulla which is the upper part the part that does not contain a central canal but in which the canal opens to form the floor of the lower part of the fourth ventricle note the crumpled back shape of the inferior olivary nucleus that characterizes the upper medulla the most lateral part of the floor of the fourth ventricle is formed by the vestibular area deep to which is the vestibular nuclei represented in a the vestibular nuclei consists of a group of four nuclei that extend between the rostral medulla and caudal pons a the vestibular nuclei thus matches with one receives input from the vestibular apparatus of course through the vestibular cochlear nerve b is a longitudinally oriented tract through the posterior lateral region of the medulla this is the solitary tract it is surrounded by the nucleus of the solitary tract nucleus of the tractus solitarius the tract consists of sensory fibers derived from facial glossopharyngeal and vagus nerve these fibers they course caudally through the medulla and enter the nucleus solitarius at various levels where they synapse upon second order neurons the fibers derived from the facial nerve they convey taste sensation from the anterior two-thirds of the tongue these fibers are primarily carried by the lingual nerve and then they are delivered to the facial nerve through the corda tympani fibers of the glossopharyngeal and vagus nerves they carry taste impulses from the posterior third of the tongue these taste fibers they terminate in the rostral or gustatory portion of the nucleus solitarius thus b matches with four transmits taste impulses dorsolaterally the medulla is connected to the cerebellum via the inferior cerebellar peduncle the inferior cerebellar peduncle is composed of fibers entering the cerebellum mainly such as the dorsal spinocerebellar tract fibers of the dorsal spinocerebellar tract they carry proprioceptive information from muscle spindles and golgi tendon organs of the ipsilateral part of the trunk and lower limb to the cerebellum thus c matches with two fibers convey muscle spindle afferents to the cerebellum d is the spinal tract of the trigeminal nerve 
This tract consists of sensory fibers derived mainly from the trigeminal, but also includes fibers from facial, glossopharyngeal, and vagus nerves. The spinal tract of the trigeminal nerve descends from the level where the trigeminal nerve is attached to the pons down to the middle and down to the level of the upper cervical spinal cord, hence the name spinal tract and spinal nucleus of the trigeminal. It gives off fibers that terminate at various levels in the medially adjacent spinal trigeminal nucleus, lightly stained here. The tract and the nucleus, they mediate pain and temperature sensations, nasty sensations from the head. Thus, D matches with 3, transmit pain and temperature signals from the head. The nice sensations of touch and pressure are transmitted to the principal or chief sensory nucleus located at the level of the pons, while the third sensory nucleus located at the level of the midbrain, the mesencephalic nucleus of the trigeminal, receives sensations of discriminative touch, vibration, and proprioception. Match the following statements with the lettered labels. This is a section of the midbrain showing the cerebral peduncle comprising the crust cerebri D and substantia nigra C. Sections of the midbrain showing the red nucleus in the tegmentum, like this one, will pass at the level of the superior colliculus of the tectum, A. The nucleus of the superior colliculus receives input from the retina, cerebral cortex, and the spinal cord. The diversity of the sources of afferent fibers indicate that it has a considerable integrative activity. The superior colliculus gives rise to the tectospinal and tectobulbar tracts and is involved in coordination of head and eye movements. The eyes are normally directed towards some object in the center of the field of vision. If the object moves, both eyes will follow to maintain visual fixation. These eye movements are largely involuntary and the pathway involves the superior colliculus. Thus A matches with the neurons that respond to moving stimuli. In statement 4, the interrupted dark lines represent a nerve tract that emerges from the midbrain in the interpeduncular fossa. This is the oculomotor nerve emerging from the anterior part of the midbrain at the level of the superior colliculus. Note that it is connected centrally to nuclei located in the periaqueductal gray matter. The oculomotor nucleus is located at the level of the red nucleus. Dorsal to the main oculomotor nucleus is another nucleus related to the oculomotor nerve. This is the edinger westphal nucleus, which contains preganglionic parasympathetic neurons. Accents from the edinger westphal nucleus accompany the motor fibers of the oculomotor nerve into the orbit where they relay in the ciliary ganglion. Postganglionic fibers from the ciliary ganglion supply the sphincter pupillae muscle of the iris and thus can constrict the pupil when a light falls on the retina. This is the pupillary light reflex. Hence, B, the edinger westphal nucleus, matches with 2 neurons that respond to flashing lights. C is the substantia nigra, which is a motor nucleus that consists of two regions, pars compacta and pars reticularis. The compact zone, pars compacta, is made up of distinctively pigmented dopaminergic neurons, while the reticularis contains non-pigmented neurons. The substantia nigra is reciprocally connected to the corpus callosum and is involved in regulating motor activity. Its neurons undergo degeneration in Parkinson's disease. Thus, C, substantia gelatinosa, matches with three source of dopaminergic innervation of the corpus striatum. D, the cerebral peduncle, is a massive ventrally located fiber bundle that consists of corticopontine, corticospinal, and corticobulbar fibers. The corticopontine fibers occupy the medial and lateral portions of the crust cerebri, while the corticospinal fibers occupy the middle region. The corticospinal fibers 
are upper motor neurons of the pyramidal pathway. Thus, D corticospinal fibers match with upper motor neurons in statement one.